In the previous lesson, we talked about converting between a, uh, a logic expression, Boolean expression, uh, it, which was represented in what we're going to refer to as Boolean algebra, converting that to a circuit diagram, a schematic, using the gate symbols, and then converting to a truth table. We did it kind of as an introduction, so probably would be a good idea to do a couple of more. Let's go ahead and try that. So I am going to come up with, let's see, some sort of a Boolean expression. All right, how about that guy? This says X, our output, the output from our circuit is going to be the combinational logic of the inverse of A anded with the inverse of C ORed with the value that's at B anded with C, all right? Now, real quick refresher, we had the three primary gates that we were worried about using, the inverter, the not, the one that's represented with those bars over a symbol, and everything under the bar gets calculated first, then you take the inverse of it to see what the output of that, that inverter is. Then there was the AND, which said that I've got a gate with multiple inputs. All of those inputs have to equal a one before the output equals a one. That was represented with those dots or the product. Then there was the OR gate. And the OR gate was also had multiple inputs, like the AND gate had multiple inputs, but its output was a one if any of the inputs were equal to a one. And that symbol was represented with the plus sign or the sum. So, Many of you probably have experience with the, in mathematics with this saying PEMDAS, right? And this represented order of operations, the order in which you were supposed to do or perform operations in one of these expressions. And it said parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction. Well, we don't have quite as many operations when it comes to our Boolean expressions, but there's still some. For example, we're going to do the parentheses first. Now, an interesting thing about the not is that everything under the bar is considered really to be in parentheses. So if I have an operation like A or B, and then I have a bar over both of them, Really, this bar over both of them is equivalent to saying, put parentheses around that A or B, do everything under the bar like you would parentheses. Then do your, after you do your inverses, then you do your ands, the multiplication, then you do your ors, the addition, all right? So we're gonna do a couple of these and we're gonna play around with these as if they were, well, algebraic expressions. Now I know that algebra may not have been your favorite subject, but this is going to be really easy. I'll tell easy. Yeah, let me tell you why. In algebra, how many numbers do you have? Well, infinite, right? You have an infinite number of numbers. Even if you're sticking with integers, you still have an infinite number of numbers. How many numbers do we have with Boolean expressions? Two. We have a zero, we have a one. And that makes things easier. It makes things a little bit more straightforward. Now let's take a look at this expression up here. First of all, if this were a mathematical algebra expression, what's the very first thing you'd do? Well, the very first thing you'd do is probably the additions, right? Actually, <laughs> no, the very first thing you'd do is the multiplications. Then you would do the additions. But we do have that weird twist thrown in with these bars. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and draw this circuit. I'm going to start out by looking at all the variables that I need as inputs here. I have A, I have C, it appears twice, but I have C, and I have B. So I'm going to go ahead and draw over here A, B, and C. These are our input signals. These are the signals that we're going to start propagating from left to right through our logic circuit. Now, what's the very first thing you do? Well, let's take a look at this guy right here, this product right here. It says I am going to and the inverse of A with the inverse of C. That means that I need to run A 
through an inverter to get a bar, and I also need to run C through an inverter in order to get C bar. So now that I have A bar and C bar available to me, now I can AND them together. So I'm going to take an AND gate, I'm going to run A bar in, and I'm also going to run C bar in, so at this point I have A bar ANDed with C bar. All right. Now, that takes care of that. Can I OR this with B? No, because this AND has precedence over this OR, so we have to compute the B and C first, which means another AND gate. Do I have B available? Yeah, it's right there. Do I have C available? Yep, it's right there. The value that goes in before hitting that inverter, right? So I'm going to create another AND gate. And this AND gate is going to have B ANDed with C. And so I've got B and C. Now, back in the old days, whenever we crossed two lines in one of our circuits, we would do this little hoppy thing, this little loop to make it, make it look like the wire was actually jumping over the other wire. Um, that's kind of gone out of, out of style because, mostly because now most of our schematics are drawn in CAD systems, and the CAD doesn't have to interpret that as a connection or a not, in, or not a connection. But whenever I draw these up on the board, what you're going to see is if there's a cross like that, there's no connection. If, however, I put a heavy dot right where the intersection occurs, that means there is a physical connection. So right here with just those two wires crossing over each other, there's not a connection. All right, am I done with my circuit? No, because the last operation is I have to OR this signal with this signal. And so I create an OR, and I OR the output of those two ANDs together, and here is my X output, all right? So this gives us a real good view from left to right as the signals change how they propagate or pass through these different gates. Let's draw the truth table now, and we're going to draw the truth table in the same progression that we drew our circuit. So, first of all, let me go ahead and I actually give myself a little bit more room here. All right, so we have the three input signals, A, B, and C. So we have 0, 0, 0, and, and we're going to go and list every possible value. The truth table is not complete unless we have listed every possible pattern of ones and zeros at the input. So remember, three patterns of three inputs, I have two to the three or eight possible patterns of ones and zeros. Four of them are going to start with zero, so I've already listed one of them. Four of them are going to start with zero. Four of them are going to start with one. Then B, there's going to be two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones, and then C is going to be alternating zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. All right. Now, let's do this exactly the same way or in the same progression that we did this logic circuit. What is the very first thing that we needed to do? Well, going left to right, the first thing that we needed to do was we needed to compute A bar, and we also needed to compute C bar. So let's make a column for A bar and a column for C bar. Now, the output of an inverter is just the opposite of what the input is. So for each one of these rows, for A bar, figure out what the opposite of A bar is. So for these first four rows, A bar is going to be a 1 because A is a 0. Where, the, uh, where A is a 1 in these last four rows, A bar is going to be a 0. All right. C bar, what are we looking at here? Well, C bar is going to be the inverse of C. So everywhere C is a 0, C bar is going to be 1. Everywhere C is a 1, C bar is going to be a 0. And we get this alternating pattern, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. All right. Now, what was the next thing we did? Well, the next thing we did was we figured out what the AND was, the product of A bar and C bar. So we have A bar ANDed with C bar. 
And by the way, later on, we're going to show, in a later lesson, we're going to show why A bar and C bar is not equal to A and C with a bar over both of them. That's a different expression, and I'll show you that in a later episode. So, how does the AND work? The AND works if I have a 1 for A bar and a 1 for C bar. Where does that happen? Well, A bar is a 1 here, C bar is a 1 here, we have a 1. Go a little further down the third row, A bar is a 1, C bar is a 1, so the output of A bar and C bar is also a 1 there. For all the other rows, there is at least one zero at the input, and a zero going into an AND gate forces a zero on the output. All right. What was the next thing that we did? Well, the next thing we did was we took a look at that B and C. So B, the product of B and C, what does that look like? Well, the inputs for B and C come back over to these original inputs, B and C, these, these columns right here. When are both B and C equal to 1? Well, it's not equal to 1 until you get to this fourth row. So B and C are both a 1 in the fourth row. Notice A doesn't have anything to do with this. Then we go a little bit further down and we see in the last row, B and C are both 1s in the eighth row. Once again, A doesn't have anything to do with this, but we have B is a 1, C is a 1, so B and C is a 1. All the other rows, we got zeros. All right. Now for our last column. In the last column, what we're looking at is what happens when we take A bar and C bar and OR it with B and C. What's the result? Well, these two columns represent A bar and C bar and B and C. All we need to do is OR those two columns together. And when we OR those two columns together, we get 1 or 0 is 1. Remember, a 1 at either input of an OR gate, this OR gate, a 1 at either input is going to output a 1. So we have 1 or 0 is 1. 0 or 0 is 0. Two zeros OR together make a 0. Kind of like 0 plus 0 is 0, right? 1 or 0 is 1. 0 or 1 is 1. 0 or 0 is 0, 0 or 0 is 0, 0 or 0 is 0, and then 0 or 1 is 1. All right? So there we go. There is the truth table for this expression up here. Now, what I'd like to do is kind of say this like a sentence. We did this before whenever we first started talking about ands and ors. I could say, x is equal to a 1 if a is not equal to a 1 and c is not equal to a 1, or b is equal to a 1 and c is equal to a 1. So let's go down this rows and see if that kind of makes sense. So if a is not equal to a 1 and c is not equal to a 1, well that happens in this row, the first row, where a is a 0, b is a 0, and c is a 0. And it also happens in the third row, where a is a 0, b is a 1, c is a 0. We come over, we see, yep, there are two 1s in those rows. There are 1s in those rows. Or, if b is a 1 and c is a 1. Well, that happens in the fourth row, where a is a 0, b is a 1, c is a 1. Look, we got a 1 out. And then it happens in the eighth row, where a is a 1, b is a 1, c is a 1. We've got a 1. Okay? All the other cases where these guys, where, where either of those is not true, where either of those products is not true, we're going to be outputting a zero. Makes sense. All right. In our next lesson, we're going to be talking about a special type of gate, a special type of operation called a decoder. Um, and it really, what it's looking for is, when is the one case when all of these things are true? Sounds like an AND gate. It is an AND gate, but it's a special kind. So we'll talk about that in the next lesson.